So here we are on Ohana for game number one. Let's introduce our players. Starting from the top left, we have a six puller. Targa. Oh, I'm sorry. For some what? reason, I didn't see the egg. <laughs> I didn't see the egg, I'm man. Like, right, his supplies at eight. I'm Wait, like, no, the no, six no, puller. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. Huh. Whatever, bro. Okay. It definitely was not at eight. I thought it was six pulling. We have Targa in the bottom right hand position. Who do we have? In mm, the bottom right, we have. Member from TSL, one of the best English-speaking Korean players. When I mean Korean, I mean True Bed Fallout Korean. It is Polt, not from Team Polt, but just Polt. Thank you, Clutch. I think, <laughs> I think Polt does have the best English, though. If I think of anyone, he he's got like an incredible understanding. Like for example, I was told that Polt understood everything. Um, Rachel Karik, uh, Seltzer, Rachel Seltzer told me. That Polt has like full knowledge of everything you ever say in English. It's just that sometimes he can't communicate it back. Now Violet has really good English speaking ability, so but he doesn't necessarily understand everything. So who would you consider better at English, Andre? Violet. Just because he can communicate better. Oh yeah, he com communicates complex Zerg strategies to me. That's true. I That's mean, true. so can Polt too. Polt can well not Zerg maybe. Well maybe Zerg, but he can come. He can well, so it's the fact that he can Taren. he can communicate to me, meaning he can obviously understand. I think Violet doesn't give himself enough credit for his English. That's true. But it's really funny because every time Violet says something, he always sounds like he's in trouble. He's like ah, oh. and it's just yeah. like that. <laughs> like ah, oh. actually you're uh, right. <laughs> uh. And it's just like he's, he always sounds like he's really nervous. Like um, I really think so. Yeah. Um. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, oh, Violet, you're so cute. I love you. Uh, and Violet's just super nice. Like, everyone asks, like, which are the which are the players that are like most approachable for hugs? I think Pulse one of them. I think Marine King's really approachable, and Violet is super approachable. All those guys are so nice. Pulse like always gets asked for photographs. Like, he's like eating ones, and some guys like slaps his chopstick on the ground. Like, take a picture of these right now. Pulse like, okay, okay. And he like turns around and smiles, and he puts holds up a peace sign. July Zerg is also super approachable. Maybe not, but he's... Yes. <laughs> you know who's super approachable to? Nanny Wall. Yes, he is. You ask <laughs> him is. for a hug anytime. <laughs> Especially ask him <laughs> after he's done losing. After he's done playing an intense series to MVP, just, tell, just yeah, ask just, Nanny Wall. Just like, hey, Nanny Wall, can I have a hug? <laughs> <laughs> or just stay on stream, Nanny Wall messed up. Or just talk to him about game strategy <laughs> right after. <laughs> oh, man. Did you know Good Tasteless time. did that? I know he didn't mean to, but he was like, Naniwa messed up, and then Naniwa walked past him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that awkward moment. Yeah, That's I mean, right. it was I a mean, shame. Th those games uh, were going too far into this, but those games were so, so sad. I felt like Naniwa didn't even get a chance to show if he was a better player than MVP in, in that series. But That's okay. That's okay. But um, Go you hug know what? These players can show a lot of skill. It's Targa versus, tar uh, versus Polt. Now let's talk a little bit about Targa. We, we focused a lot on Polt. Targa has been showing lots of interesting plays. For example, he's a guy that will stay on two base for a long time and throw different compositions that you're not used to. Uh, in ZBT, for example, I saw him play a best of nine with Cast. He went Hydra Ling with Nidus as a standard two base timing attack. You know, like normally when you hit with Roach Bane, mm -hmm. he hit, he went Hydra Lane. And then the next game it didn't work, he went Hydra Muta. And I'm like, well, what is into Ultra Lisk? I was like, okay, <laughs> really? okay, Targa. He was trying to go into Ultra Lisk, but he didn't get a chance because Cass was killing him. And it's just like these really weird things that Targa is thinking in his mind. But you know what? It's cool because I like creativity. Targa has been one of these players that no one knows about, but that's because he's, he's, he's a solid player that I think mm -hmm. is not afraid to think outside the box. And it's very inspiring because I haven't seen people play around with composition so much since like the days of like TLO first playing Zerg. Yeah, fun fact actually, did you know that Roach Hydra ends up beating out Marine Marauder Medivac? Hmm. Uh, well, we never get the opportunity because everyone always wants to go in We used to see it all the time in the beta. Like all <laughs> the time. You mean when roaches were one supply and two armor? No, no, no. Like like yeah. when they got two supply and everything, and this was when they had three range. You go Roach Hydra and absolutely demolish any sort of marine marauder as long as you kept good upgrades, and then you can I just feel like transition it would be into so infestors. So bad against tanks. It is so <laughs> bad against tanks. Yeah. But uh, I mean, just some uh, some little thing because we've seen 
you know, strictly bio be very successful if you mm. think back to MLG ZVT well, with Marine King and Stefano. Holt is not going bio. He only has Marine and Hellions in production. The Roaches do end up getting to the bunker, and the bunker does fall. Wow, I thought Pole would be able to get the repair off, but now he doesn't have it. And Targa has an amazing timing where he can oh, strike Pole, wow. and he doesn't lift up the supply depots either. Oh my goodness. Take nice. out the reactor. That's probably one of the most important things. You want to take out all of these uh, critical add-ons. But instead, mm. he's just going to go for the uh. SCVs right now. Still a good choice. Obviously, SCV kills are awesome. Additional reinforcements you can get in here. He's actually retreating with them. Don't know why. But the Roach is still going to do a ton of damage. Well, he's trying to get him closer so that way the SCVs get hit by the Roaches from the low ground. But the target is on the Supply Depot. It's going to get really close. The Roach is certainly trying to attack the Supply Depot as fast as they can. But the repair is just in time. And the big thing is that target lost vision on the high ground. And Pult stabilizes after a very close call. Whew. Yeah, now he has Roach. Or excuse me. He has Hellion, Marauder, Marine, which is a great composition, of course. Uh, but he just does not have the supply to actually back anything up. Baneling Nest is going down very intelligently. And I think from here, Targa can transition to just Roach, Zergling, Baneling, Defense. And he just goes ahead, takes his third base, and he's absolutely fine, knowing that he has a huge economic advantage over his opponent. Excuse yeah. me. I think uh, with this advantage, as long as Targa plays really solidly, he's, he should be okay. Because, I mean, Targa, I mean, I mean Polt went down to 18 SCVs. That's a, that's a very, very low amount for almost nine minutes into the game. You can see Polt is now just getting up everything else, like Stim and whatnot, and really just tries to make sure his map presence can be increased. As soon as he gets these Hellions out, he can uh, continue to harass. Targa really has no map presence in that regard, but uh, the big thing is, you know, is Targa going to go for a third expansion and be able to defend it against these Hellions, or will the Hellion be able to really deny any kind of uh, expansion attempt for Targa? It'll be tough. I think another Roach round should be inbound pretty soon here. But just drones galore right now. Units have showing 45 to 26. Mm. So yes, he's definitely overstepping his boundaries, in my opinion. He yeah. needs to start getting some Roaches. Zerglings instead, I don't think that's the right decision. Yeah, when oh. we see this many Hellions, even if you have Zerglings, the fact is those Hellions can get in a good position just to, to basically kill. Uh, anything that comes at them with light, with light properties. If you can see immediately Pole trying to go for that third cancel. We can see Target trying to see if he can rush, where he does end up canceling. His Banelings were trying to go to the low ground, but Target doesn't have the position he wants to. Now he's going to try to see if he can go for the flank, but Pole has a pretty good position. And keep in mind, all he has to do is avoid the Banes with the Hellions, and he does get the good splash, and all of a sudden Targa's in a very awkward spot. Yep, not enough Roaches out here. The Hellions are just oh. burning up these drones, going into the main. Meanwhile, the Marauders are finally worked. Uh, actually, they're they're actually dying. Oh excuse no. me. But finally, now oh. the Hellions getting into the main. The drones, and look at Andre. this. My God. Oh my God. There's so many drones that are dropping, and the Hellions have done so much damage, and they are not done. And uh, back at home, Pult's tacking up to Starport, getting everything else. Stim has even finished. And after all has been said and done, Pult returns to favor very handsomely. Now evening out the worker count basically, but with orbitals. Of course, uh, as Andre says, Pult is uh, at around 43 SCVs right now compared to Targus 36. Yeah, four and a half efficient mining workers. You have to also take that into consideration because after just about 32 SCVs, when you're just on minerals, you lose a lot of efficiency. There's a law of diminishing return that affects them where they're not mining 40 minerals. Instead, they're mining 20 minerals per mm. minute. We see Targa is... Uh, to, uh, trying to re-expand to that third while getting his macro hatchery up. He's, his, del his tech has been delayed severely. It's 12 and a half minutes in the game. His lair's not even done. Uh, by some games, we've been seeing Zerg already have their hive halfway done by now and uh, really uh, get it up by 14 minutes. But Targa is now struggling just to have a healthy supply count. And uh, that's, that's going to be really tough for Targa in the minigame, especially since creep spread hasn't been that good for Targa either. And Pult's been looking really sharp. And it all comes down to the fact that Pult was able to kill those mini drones and really even out the economy. And now Targa really can uh, move out in the map at all. Yeah, there's just too much stuff here. And when you drone that long on only two hatcheries, you're going to get punished. And this is a lot of 
of space that he's losing by all these creep tumors. The creep tumors being lost is actually like a job well done. He can actually back up from here and just say, okay, I have a pretty big advantage knowing that my later timing is going to be very relevant. Oh, the queens are off creep, and so uh, they're going to have to engage on that ramp instead. And you can see immediately Poultice pulling back to Hellion. He's trying to go for a run by yet again to see if he can catch the drones off guard. He's going to try to roast more, but back at the 30, he's still fighting as well. Poultice trying to do a two-pro aggression and doing it beautifully, taking out the rest of the units and forcing the queens off their injects. This is valuable time. Poult is crushing the Zerg economy. And again, keeping target down to just 35 workers wow. while he is at 50. That's insane. And he's going to go for a, you know, just this constant, constant pressure. Knowing that his opponent has no creep tumors out on the field, that is a tough situation to be in. And I feel like target is just so far behind because of that. Because think, it actually affects all the DPS. Your, your units just cannot close in on time. And when you're trying to defend against Marines and, and uh, well, basically try to connect with your banelings that means a lot that can mean the battle won or the battle lost so i feel like target is just in a terrible position pult is just going to snowball this with additional harass and probably take out the third yet again seeing as it's barely saturated we see target finishing up his infestation pit and getting double evo upgrades but i mean these things are so far behind i mean pult already has double drop in the main and what can Target do against these? He's just got Zerglings. He was trying to conserve everything for his Infestors to come out. And Target can't even deal with these Marines. The Queens are going to drop in just a second. Roaches are trying to rush to the scene of the crime. But Targa is not really able to answer this too much. He's going to lose a lot of Queens. And if Pol just continues to pick off these Queens, the creep spread, the injects are all going to fall even further behind. Correct. And you can see the creep spread. There's, what, four creep tumors out in the field? Yeah. This is... Not looking good, especially 16 and a half minutes of the game. If this was TLO and a 16 and a half minutes into the game, there would be creep all the way at the third uh -huh. of his opponent's base. So Targa's really hurting over there. And because of that, he's not like going Muta. If he was going Muta, then yeah, he would be in a good position or an okay position. I would even say you still need to build creep tumors. But Muta's give you a lot of space inherently, and then you can do things freely. But when you're going Roach, Zirkling, Baneling, it's one of the most important things to get creep. It's probably half of your army. Uh, you can see that Pult uh, just continues to get his upgrades. Now he has 2-2 two -two about to finish uh, while moving out for his third. Pult ha does have a 2-2 two -two timing very much so against Targa if he wanted to. But he's not bringing his tanks. He's just leaving it back home, trying to make sure that there's no counterattack that can come from his opponent. And I, I just like the way Polt's playing with his lead. He's not trying to overextend. He's, I mean, what's so annoying is, like, if you're trying to move out as Terran, Zerg just buys time, buys time. But he's making sure Target doesn't even have an opportunity to buy time. 3-3 three, three on the way out right now. And look at this. Target is just being relegated to making units this whole time. And this is a stage where you actually want to be teched into Hive. And, you know, just the fact that you get this super fast Infestor counter, a really great army composition that holds you over towards into the mi mid game, um, you know, so that you can get your hive. The fact that he doesn't have that is, it just shows you how far ahead Pult is. And even though the supplies look super similar, no matter what, Pult will get a lot out of this attack. He's going to be way ahead no matter what. Just because trades at this point in time will favor him, seeing as his opponent is only mm. on four gases. Well, I mean, he's going to have to do something because the creep has been completely reduced. And now Polt is knocking on the front doors of Targa. And Targa, he's not really going to be able to engage from all different angles. He's only got all his army clumped to one side of the map. And that's exactly what Polt wants. He's going to slow push his way into this base. And Targa doesn't really have that timing he can really buy until, I guess, plus two carapace. But... That's pretty much it. Targa has to engage now. You can see Pol trying to uh, complete split his units, but it doesn't even really matter. There's just so many tanks. And Targa does manage to catch Fungals, but he loses a lot of army here. And Pol, just like you said, he trades here, but he trades incredibly efficiently. Yeah, I mean, he loses that fight. Okay, everybody knows that, but let's look at the units tab real quick and go back into this. 60 SEVs to 63 drones, obviously way ahead for the Terran, seeing as he has three orbital command centers that brings him up to a total of 13.5 plus 60, which is 73.5 SEVs. On top of that, he has a great army composition. He has amazing upgrades, so he can continue doing these 2-2 two -two timings. 
He can always pressure up. His opponent doesn't have creep, so he can't extend to a fourth base easily. Right now, where can I actually say target has an advantage? I mean, all of his gas has been directed into units, and at mid-game, you don't want to be directing uh, your gas into units. You want to be directing into your more important upgrades and your tech. Obviously, he can't do that, and I feel like Pult is, uh, is just has a, an iron grasp in this game. Well, I mean, the big thing is Pult clean up a lot of creep. He killed uh, about half of the Infestors and the Banelings, so basically Targa gas investment has been really short-term use. Um, and you can see that Targa is just making more Infestors. That's what he has to do at this point, but he's also trying to try to expand slowly. But his vision on the map has been so constricted. He has no real presence whatsoever. And as a result, Polk can really issue out timings whenever he pleases. He has 3-3 three, three done. He's got 3-3 three, three Marines, and mm -hmm. Hive has just started for Targa. Exactly. And think, every single engagement here actually favors Terran so much because if he can force more gas into non-Broodlord uh, units, then obviously he's super far ahead, right? Because as soon as Broodlords come out, those are the money makers. Those are the ones that actually get some efficient. Taking out the fourths is all he has to do. I would even say, Pult, don't even bother with that third base knowing that the main is drying out, the natural is drying out. Just go and kill fourth bases and play the War of Attrition. Yeah, Pult's also dropping the main, as you can see, in the picture-in-picture, and Targa's setting a lot of his Zergans, which means he's not going to be able to deal with it immediately. You can see the huge army fight as well. Lots of damage being done as the Fungals really land on the Marines, but there's a good high ground advantage from his opponent. And uh, from there, really, Targa gave up a lot of positioning, especially with that high ground. It almost feels like those Infestors don't even do anything because there are so many Medivacs out on the field. I mean, this is just looking so wow. difficult. And like, Targa. Well, can, Targa has to come from a couple angles, but the biggest thing is that these tanks are spread out really well. All the tanks are not targeting the Infestors and letting a lot of the army crush through, but Targa's losing a lot of supply, and these 3-3 three, three Marines are absolutely ravaging the Zerg army. Look at the Marines directly confront and set the Zergs and Roaches with lots of efficiency. Holt does lose a lot of his medevacs, but again, Targa survives at the skin of his teeth and a loss of a base. That's fine, though. Go for another round, Pult. You're good to go, man. You can go ahead. Look at this. This recharge. Think of how many reinforcements Pult needed just to kill that. And now it looks like Pult's going to gear up for this fourth over here on the left-hand side. I mean, even that trade worked out really nicely for Pult. So uh, everything is going really super well. And, uh, you know, it's it's tough. It's tough to, to find a place where Target has an advantage. Wow. And you see the good oh split in the concave as well, making sure that... Uh, there's no real ability to fungal the units. Pole playing very well. His micro has always been very superb with Terran army. You can see that Targa has managed to sneak in a few more drones and continue to spread creep. Targa is being really resilient this game. I mean, by now, a lot of Zergs already would have crumbled to the 2-2-3-3 two, two, three, three timings of Terran. But Targa's holding as hard as he can for dear life. You can see he really has to uh, protect his expansions because he's running out of ability to resupply because he's limited by minerals at this point. Yeah. And you see that the investors are dropping as well, and Pole finally managed to really break a huge backbone of the Terran army, which is the Fungals. He's on one base at this point, Froden. There it is. GG, ladies and gentlemen. Targa will tap out, giving Pult the first win. Wow. Fantastic play from Pult. And uh, Pult, all of a sudden, looking really sharp because if Pult wins, now he's 5-3 and three very much into the wild cards. And, uh, and that's a really good win for our player from Korea, Targa. Uh, well, let's talk about the game a little bit. Um, do you think that Roachling attack was very, like, if it didn't do, like, was do you consider that kind of like a all-in timing-ish? Where it's like, if you didn't do damage, he's just so far behind. I or it's like... To an extent, yes. Is it, like, okay to incorporate that? S what, what are your thoughts about the build and the early attack from Targa? I thought Targa, I mean, was able to catch his opponent off guard really nicely. Um, but the... The situation afterwards when he was dealing with the Marine Marauder Hellion, I think all you have to do is defend that and you're winning. You know you're up, you know, a good 15 drones on your opponent. Just say, okay, let me make sure I don't die to anything, and then larva mechanics will kick in. I'm good to go. That's all he had to do. Instead, he went drone, 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 over drone. And double queen. And then he went into Zerglings. And when you go into Zerglings, well, if your opponent has Marine Marauder Hellion, what are you really going to kill? 
You know, uh, you need a lot of banelings nothing, there. Really. Yeah, you can't. Yeah. The Marauders are going to take the damage, and, and the, the, the Hellions are going to just... Yeah. Exactly. It's, it's, well, just it's hard because Targo even saw the Hellions, too, with his first pack of links. Correct. He saw the Hellion count, so he really should have not made that many. Now, incorporating them for the surround can be important. Yes. But uh, it's just not it's, making pure It's always lane. Roach, Zergling, and then you have, like, Roaches entering the fight, and then Zergling's cupping around. Fair enough. But you just, with three Roaches and a couple of Queens, you're not going to be able to do the damage that you need to do. Sounds like a plan. All right, so let's thank uh, Azo for providing monitors for NASL Season 3. Thank you so much for providing everything uh, with our monitors. So, guys, we'll be back after this. We want to we, – what do we have coming up? We have Game 2 versus Poland Target. <laughs> I thought we had a segment coming up for something. <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a long day, guys, but we're going to have more action coming up right after this commercial.